<laughs> Welcome back to Love at First Ride, my fun vlog, <laughs> fun for me at least, right? Um, that uh, just, you know, chronicles the writing process and um, helps me kind of think through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And um, it's actually one of the things that I so much love about this process because, you know, we writers, um, there's no employee of the month. We work alone a lot of the time. And so we're stuck sort of talking to ourselves like this. And um, it's actually surprisingly helpful to, you know, to, for me at least, to hear myself talking about these things out loud, talking about the process out loud um, of how we get from point A to point B, and not only finish a book, but um, finish a draft, for instance, but edit it and get it done in its entirety and perhaps write um, an entire series or several series. This is Barney, my um, Boston Terrier, who is just the best writing companion in the world. But if you hear snorting and snoring and a fart here and there, it's him. It's him. Um, so today, Today, I want to talk about research, which is actually a delicious topic. Um, so don't roll your eyes. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, there is so much pressure right now on writers, um, writers who make their living writing, to write quickly, to just get content out there. And um, with with research, it's so twofold because on one hand, um, people, uh, some writers you know, cringe at it a little bit and feel like it's it's just such a tremendous time suck. And um, it, there's a sort of continuation to sort of write what you know, right? Um, just so that you can get it out there because it's it, these are worlds you know that you don't have to necessarily build from the ground up and um, allows you to get content out there a lot faster. That's true. I mean, that's true. If you do know your world, you probably can write a book in, in um, a couple of months if you are already practiced in the genre, if you um, know your characters, if this is part of a series, uh, you know, that is definitely possible. Um, that's not what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm writing an epic series. I'm writing a really big series. You know, it's fantasy based. So it's, 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 it's intricate in plot. There's a lot going on. That's what's expected of the genre. And, and I actually really, really love that. And one of the things that I so love about research and why, um, you know, regardless of the school you're in as a writer, you know, whether you want to um, be fast, 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 or, or whether you're writing a, a a bigger, more sort of epic uh, series that, you know, has a lot of pages and a lot of characters and, and complexities is that sooner or later, we all need research um, because research is also a muse. And, you know, even if we write a big series that we know so well, uh, if, if we, you know, have maxed out on that series and are moving on to something else, Oh, we've got to get some ideas. And, you know, I find that um, research is a procession of inspiration. It is like traveling only better, right? <laughs> because you always get to stay at the best hotels. Um, if you're, you know, depending on the story you're writing, a, a, a vacation romance is a slam dunk. Um, you get to wear whatever clothes you want. You get to go wherever you want. You get to walk down dark alleys. You get to go into um, parties that you would otherwise never have access to. Um, places and people that um, even if you are a big traveler, you may not have the opportunity to meet because it is your choice. And um, it's it's part of the process that I so enjoy. Um, right now I'm researching Cairo around the turn of the 20th century, which has always been a big fascination for me. I love that time period and that place um, together. That's just a great Reese's peanut butter cup for um, for all of my interests, right? And I, you know, you you find out these little tidbits of information, these bits of color that are just so motivating. Um, for instance, this week, I, you know, I was I was reading about um, how in February, uh, strawberry vendors in Cairo are particularly um, aggressive. It, it, 
around the turn of the century, at least. I don't know if they are still right now. Um, but that the practice tourists, you know, um, already knew that you never buy strawberries from these folks because they moisten the strawberries in their mouths in order to get the dust off, which I thought, I mean, what a fantastic um, tidbit of information that um, I immediately wrote into my story. And um, it, it is, you know, and I've been reading about English nationals and all of these with, with every single, um, with every single, uh, you know, not maybe every single, but with, with most of the facts that I find, but especially the color, it is so damned inspirational. And it, almost always um, sparks not one more idea, but several ideas. And it also helps me plot because um, plot intrigues come up, but they start popping up like whack-a-moles, you know? And, um, and suddenly when you've been struggling, when I've been struggling with figuring out what my characters are doing next, often through research, it will come to me organically because it'll be um, one of those situations where you look at it and you say, well, of course they now have to go to um, Luxor or, or whatever it is. And um, that can actually move the process along quite a bit. And it can also uh, put a, a great deal of, of, of um, originality and um, just really fun twists and turns into your story that if you're not doing any research, um, are doing very little of it. It's very easy to get caught up in the same old patterns. Um, we are, you know, creatures of patterns. Our thoughts go into patterns. I often, you know, when I look back and I and I read through some some books that I wrote in the past, um, I can see things that I'd completely forgotten I'd written finding their way into a book that I'm writing now. And, and, and then I have to sort of move it around and realize, oh God, you know, I can't, I can't be that repetitive. That's crazy. Um, but it, you know, it, it, it happens without you even knowing it so often. And, um, research is, is really a great way to sort of stave off that, um, that monster, you know, that, that repetitive monster that just keeps rearing his head. However, what you absolutely don't want to do is get caught in the research black hole. And this is, I think, something that especially happens to first time novelists because you get so caught up in research and it becomes a vehicle for procrastination because you just keep finding all of these interesting things. And then you are overwhelmed and you cannot figure out how to get them all into your manuscript. And if you do try to shove them all into your manuscript, it's just, you know, a bunch of roving facts and, and who cares, right? It's not as interesting. Your, your, um, your reader will not be as enthralled with your story if you allow it to really, really be bogged down with too many facts and um, too, too, too much color that just goes into too much detail because you're trying to be, say, historically accurate. So it's something to watch, you know? And what I like to do and what really works for me is um, is using my gut, really. I mean, the first bit that, that strikes me, the first few things um, as, as I'm perusing, you know, research material that really strike me, um, I tend to use and I tend to throw out the stuff that is more, that, that tends to strike me later. Um, even if that stuff is very good, because you just don't want too much. You don't want to go down too many rabbit holes. You don't, um, you don't want to have too much infor information that then um, muddies the waters and prohibits you from, from doing, you know, a, a really crisp job when it comes to plot and plot turns. So that's my two cents. Um, hope that uh, this has been helpful and fun and have a great one.